Assalamu alaikum students. Uh, so this short lecture is about the functions of uh, cerebellum. Now these functions I have been talking about uh, over the last two lectures, even in anatomy, I have been hinting towards the uh, what the cerebellum does. Uh, and in the discussion on uh, uh, regarding the circuits of the cerebellum, uh, I gave a lot of details of the nitty gritty of how the cerebellum works. Uh, so hence, it's just now warranted that we go through a summary, uh, summarized version of uh, cerebellar functions. Uh, and a note before we uh, start the summary is that uh, from the university question point of view, uh, this is really uh, a very uh, uh, important uh, question. Uh, what are the functions of cerebellum? Or he can, uh, or, or the university can ask a specific uh, part uh, of the cerebellum and ask its function. Uh, so uh, parts of anatomy and parts of function with parts of dysfunction is, is a typical university question from the assessment point of view, which of course is, uh, is important to know. Uh, so followed by this short presentation on the summary of functions, we also uh, look at the dysfunction, i.e. the clinical disorders of the cerebellum and wrap, the, wrap this whole thing up. Okay, before, before we do that, uh, this is a very, very useful diagram. Uh, this I borrow from uh, Genong and look at how he has described uh, the cerebellum uh, functionally. Okay, so he has described it in three, in three uh, uh, ways or three points. Hold on. So, the term is spino cerebellum. Spino means spinal cord. Cerebellum is cerebellum. Cerebro cerebellum. Cerebro means cerebral cortex. Vestibulo cerebellum. Vestibulo cerebellum obviously means uh, uh, things to do with the vestibular operators, okay, or the vestibular tracts. So naturally, uh, if if you remember these names, spino cerebellum, uh, cerebro cerebellum, and vestibulo cerebellum you automatically remember uh, a, a pretty good uh, picture of what the function is linked with this part so this is the this is the usefulness of this uh, this uh, particular diagram and what he has done is um, so he has uh, named uh, each area of functional area of the cerebellum after a function so Look at this, the vermis and the adjoining intermediate zone on both sides, he has labeled it as one because their function is one. They deal with the spinal cord. This is very important. Okay. So the central most portion of the cerebellum right here. Okay. Right here. This is the spino cerebellum and it has extensive linkage with the spinal cord and uh, since Spinal cord is where the motor uh, uh, pathways exit and go to the muscles. You can automatically, straight away, right now, switch uh, your knowledge of the circuits that we were talking about. The switch on, switch off of agonist, the switch off, switch on of the antagonist, and then reverse. You know, this is at the start of the big uh, movement. And at the end of the movement, you reverse this order. You switch off the agonist, you switch on the ag uh, antagonist. Okay. All that sort of business in ballistic movements happens because of this part of the cerebellum. It's this part of the cerebellum that learns when you uh, 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 go for a new movement, when you learn a new movement, okay? So this is pretty useful stuff uh, uh, related to motor execution. And as you can see, he has mentioned the descending lateral and medial tracts, okay? So this is a good summary diagram. Uh, well, let me first explain the vestibular cerebellum, then we'll go to the cerebro cerebellum because cerebro cerebellum I have uh, talked least about. So vestibular cerebellum, as you can as you can see, it's vesti it's related to vestibular operators. So naturally, uh, uh, your your mind should go to the vestibular nuclei, and then naturally you should go to balance, equilibrium, posture, uh, and you should add eye movements as well, uh, the VOR and nystagmus and all that business that we that we did in the vestibular operators, the semicircular canals, all of this is integrated in the vestibular nuclei. And while you are doing the uh, quick movements, the ballistic movements is when the vestibular cerebellum 
comes into play okay so most of the st static scenarios are dealt with uh, the combination of vestibular operators with vestibular nuclei however cerebellum comes i'm not saying that uh, there is no role of cerebellum in static equilibrium however more more profound role is is uh, is uh, given to the cerebellum during dynamic scenarios or a very quick changing uh, scenarios like in ballistic movements very quick movements okay so that's that uh, now let's come to the cerebro cerebellum now the 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 word itself can be a bit confusing because both start with the c but cerebro here uh, really means cerebral cortex so naturally uh, your your mind should go to planning because in fact both of these the the lateral hemispheres they have extensive linkages with the cerebral cortex okay to and fro to motor and uh, pre-motor precisely so they are involved in motor planning so now you know that motor planning is not just uh, hatched up in the motor or the pre-motor cortices in fact cerebellum uh, plays a huge part as we've been saying in the schematic diagrams uh, it plays a huge part in motor planning as well and the area of the cerebellum that is involved is the lateral hemispheres okay right so uh, just a quick uh, note about uh, uh, each one of them just a, a, a revision of the revision uh, vestibular cerebellum as we, we said it's equilibrium during performance of rapid movements uh, as compared to uh, less uh, 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 rapid movements or or slow movements uh, it has uh, it plays a uh, it is in sync with the semicircular canals uh, in these dynamic uh, postures or in these dynamic movements of the body and if you remember we spoke about uh, the predictive function of semicircular canals when we are discussing the uh, semicircular canals under the vestibular operators lectures and it's the predictive function where uh, I've described it there. I, I'll, if I remember, inshallah, I'll just put a link here. This is the same thing uh, in the cerebellum. It actually can predict uh, the next movement in the next few seconds and adjust the balance of the body at this time point. So the body is ready in the coming two, three seconds of the future. It's ready balance wise now so that it can negotiate those movements once those movements occur. So it's a pretty cool stuff. Less is known ex about details of it. Uh, but what they found in experiments is that they were working with this and uh, the new movement uh, uh, program or neuronal circuitry lit up even before the movement. And that's pretty cool. Okay. So uh, it anticipates correction of posture before it actually happens. So that's vestibular, uh, the baseline is vestibular cerebellum is required in equilibrium and balance and eye movements. In eye movements related to equilibrium and balance, not the eye movements of uh, vision, not, not that stuff, but eye is also an organ of balance. If you close your eyes, uh, you will feel a bit unsure about your balance, okay? With your eyes open, you are more, much more comfortable about your balance. That part of the eyes. Spinocerebellum, we've done uh, most of it already. Uh, we've done all of it already, actually. So it has to do with the cerebellum's connection with the spinal cord, okay? Uh, uh, both to and fro. Uh, it compares intended and actual movements. We've, we've talked about efferent copy. Uh, so uh, I'll just give a summary of this. This has been done on the, the circuits, uh, uh, the cerebellum circuits uh, video. So the original copy of the motor uh, uh, order for a new movement, for a complex movement, a copy of that is sent to cerebellum as the descending tracts are descending with that order from the cortex. Okay, A copy of that goes to the cerebellum. That is stored in the cerebellum. And when that when that order goes down to the level of the ventral horn and the thing is the order is given to the uh, ventral horn motor nu uh, nuclei the motor nuclei uh, a copy of that too at that point a copy of that is taken up by a spinocerebellar tract as we discussed 
that's called the efferent copy and this copy the cerebellum uses as a matching thing with the original copy and whatever dis uh, uh, discrepancy is in both of these it's the cerebellar cerebellum's job to patch it up okay so the intended with the actual movement is compared in spino cerebellum and the space i did not mention it in the circus diagram because that was not the place here is exact place where it happens you know the phenomena but now you know where it actually happens it happens in the spinal cerebellum damping movement also uh, we talked about overshooting of movements it's uh, done by the cerebellum uh, it the perkanji system uh, inhibitory system is set up in a way that it uh, uh, restricts or checks uh, the deep nuclei is efferent discharge so that it doesn't become uh, exaggerated by pendulum we mean every motor movement is pendulous in nature if you let uh, a muscle and a nerve uh, hang in uh, in vacuum uh, and let it go uh, then whenever the nerve will activate the muscle it will contract and it will contract in a pendulous matter in a pendulous manner okay it will go like this uh, so all of the movements inherently are are pendular in nature however it is the cerebellum and other inhibitory discharges of the higher centers which limits this pendulous movement once it initiates and brings it in the middle and stops it right this is the damping of movements control of ballistic movements i have been uh, speaking about this uh, extensively in the circus diagram uh, ballistic movements are quick movements quick bursts of movements uh, in short period of time uh, they need to be almost pre programmed uh and uh, and this is how the cerebellum basically achieves it uh, the biphasic circuit that that we we spoke about is referred here the agonist and antagonist control that is uh, the job of the spinal cerebellum to control it okay finally we talked we talk about cerebro cerebellum this is something that we haven't mentioned earlier uh, uh because uh Uh, uh, yeah this is the place where we describe it so th all the planning uh, along with uh, the cerebral cortex basal ganglia happens here okay so the stroika is is uh, involved in motor planning okay now what ab what about this plan there are two things the sequence and the timing what is sequence uh, which movement so you are walking which set of movements uh, need to be done to achieve walking or running or swimming and so on and so forth okay so any complex movement what is the sequence of events which leg will go forward and which leg will stay behind and when to move it forwards which what muscles are required to contract or relax to move this leg forward and which movements which muscles are required to contract and relax in the lagging leg okay so all the sequences are set in the cerebellum cerebellum is like the super uh, secretary okay uh, stores all this information once it's done and just pushes the play button and it just automatically does all the cortex needs to tell the cerebellum through its descending order is walk or run and the cerebellum takes care of it okay so one aspect is which movement is the next movement the other is timing when to do it so if you want to uh, uh, pull out your left leg first and the right leg is uh, lagging uh, this is the timing so first first do the left then do the right what if you uh, somehow you can't but i'm just saying what if both of the legs come out uh, forwards or backwards it's it it won't it won't uh, achieve anything right so there needs to be a timing when to do this movement uh, and when to stop the movement that when in execution is also the cerebro cerebellum's job to to plan it okay of course the <clears throat> the nitty gritty will be taken up by the spino cerebellum right but the plan the the code that's right the code of the software is written here which movements when to do it Uh, and predictive function also lies in cerebro cerebellum so that is a good summary uh, remember this is how you attempt the seq paper for the university 
if they ask you the and this is the frequently asked question function of cerebellum or any part of the cerebellum this uh, concludes the uh, uh, what do you call it? the functions of cerebellum okay so this is the second part of the lecture uh, in this we'll look at the dysfunction so we covered functions first now dysfunctions or clinical disorders of the cerebellum and uh, if you have a very good understanding of what the cerebellum does uh, it's not very far-fetched uh, to have a uh, have actually a very good understanding at least the foundation of your understanding of these clinical disorders okay it's just that you may not know the terminology uh, but the base concept uh, comes out of your understanding of the functions of cerebellum so if you haven't done that please uh, I advise you to first do the functions uh, and then uh, do uh, come come to this part okay we go to the first right the first uh, uh, summary of uh, this this thing uh, I found it very useful uh, to to compare uh, the cerebellar function with overall cerebral function with overall functions of the basal ganglia uh, dysfunction I, I beg your pardon uh, it's a very interesting thing because this is uh, hopefully you will you would remember it uh, is that in the cerebellum the awkwardness or the clumsiness of the movement happens when you intend the movement when you are going for the movement when you're about to perform the movement we call it intention movements uh, so we will study intention tremors now intention tremor is uh, uh, trembling of of say the hand okay when you want to do something with the hand at rest this hand will be steady but as soon as you want to say grasp this pen as soon as you are going for this pen and let's say the problem is in the right side as soon as it's intended for it to grab it it starts to shake okay so the 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 disorders are linked with the intentions of the movement or the doing or the performing of the movement okay in basal ganglia diametrically opposite it is meaningless or clumsy movements unintentional movements uh, and and you can't really predict so for example if I were to just compare the tremor by the way it's a university question as well what is the uh, uh, tremor of cerebellar disease and what is the tremor of the basal ganglia disease okay uh, Parkinson's Parkinson's is the basal ganglia disease the famous disease there are other diseases as well but if you can expect at second year MBBS level to be asked about if he's if, he, if they will go for a question on the disorder of basal ganglia you can rest assured that you will be asked Parkinson's okay so in Parkinson's the tremor is continuous it's not related to intention it's not related to any specific scenario it's continuous okay so this is the main difference between cerebellar and basal ganglia disorder cerebellar disorders are when you intend to do a movement basal ganglia it's either continuous or it's haphazard it's not related to any specific pattern of movement okay uh, now the actual lesions uh, starting up with what we just discussed intention tremor so intention tremor I have described is a tremor which uh, the uh, 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 the part of the body goes into uh, when uh, it's about to do a movement okay so that's that's that uh, I've, I've explained how it differs from the uh, tremor of basal ganglia the other is dysmetria now remember we talked about Mus muscular movements being pendular in nature if they are left alone to their own vices they would they would move in a pendulous manner and then after a while come decrease the the the, the range of the pendulum and eventually stop in the middle okay if they are left alone it's the cerebellum along with other descending uh, inhibitory uh, influences that does not allow the pendulum to swing so the muscle movement is one specific movement it's done and it stops there okay no no uh, overshooting or undershooting however in cerebellar disease you have dysmetria in dysmetria 
there is as 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 the slide says over or undershoot of movement and then when there is an overshoot of movement uh, the body will uh, mount an opposite movement to correct this overshoot okay so then the correction will go into overshoot and then this will be corrected and th the correction of the correction will go in, in the under, uh, in the overshoot so you can imagine it's all over the place okay it's a big pendulum okay then the default pendulum the d uh, the pendulum of the cerebellum is even bigger so this is dysmetria dysmet dysmet uh, dysmetria is 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 related with ataxia and pass pointing what is ataxia uh, uh, mind you dysmetria can uh, the uh, overstepping or the overshoot is called hypermetria these are the terms that you need to remember and undershooting is called hypometria okay now what is ataxia ataxia is uncoordinated movements uh, uh, especially the movements of the uh, while you're walking or or grand movements big movements okay why is it what is the what is the point here is this is a type of dysmetria so ataxia is a type of dysmetria in which the cerebro uh, spinal cerebellar tracts are are uh, damaged and you know by now uh, from the anatomy lectures that we did that the spinal cerebellar tract is responsible for transmitting at very high velocity transmitting information in real time of the movement of the joint and the muscles and overlying skin fascia etc everything during ballistic movements during fast movements okay so when you ask a patient to do a, a a a walking scenario which by the way i'll show you some video clips at the end of this uh you ask the person to walk now walking is a is a challenging situation for a cerebellar disease patient okay especially one who has a lesion in uh, spinal cerebellar tract as well so this this person has a problem with walking or certainly with uh, uh, brisk walking and so on and so forth so dysmet uh, dysmetria induced uncoordinated uncoordinated movements are called ataxia pass pointing as i as i explained to you what pass pointing is if you want to ask the patient to uh, classically uh, with the finger touch the tip of the nose the person will not be able to touch the tip of the nose uh, he or she will go for here 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 and then control these overshooting and eventually counter them with oppos opposing movements to figure out that this is the tip of the nose okay uh, again i have a short clip of a video and it will be very clear to you uh, when we'll discuss that okay uh, then uh, failure progression so there are two uh, two uh, 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 symptoms uh, two uh, signs one is this diadochokinesia it's a very long word probably the longest word you'll you'll hear in physiology if i'm not uh, mistaken and this arthria this diadochokinesia if you remember when we were discussing the functions of the cerebellum uh, we mentioned uh, the function of the cerebro cerebellum and the two things that uh, are involved in planning that the cerebro cerebellum is involved in one is the uh, sequence yeah, which movement is to be done next and then the next and then the next the sequence of movements the second part which is very important equally important if not more is the timing of those movements okay so in this diadochokinesia as it's a failure of progression problem in this issue there is a timing issue okay and i and i and i didn't mention something uh during uh, the uh, explanation of the functions of cerebro uh, cerebellum is that if you don't do the timing the sequence does not matter okay the timing needs to be done along with the sequence to have a graceful proper uh, planned movement okay uh so during this diadochokinesia the cerebellum uh, and, and 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 cns does not know where the part of the body is during a rapid movement hence uh, it's very difficult to uh, 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 to time the the joint or the angulation of the joint or which muscle to contract before which muscle and so on and so forth the timing is out as they say dysarthria again is a form of failure progression in which you have scanning speech remember uh, the motor aspects of speaking 
it's not the i'm not talking about the content or the intonation i'm talking about the physical the physical movement of the tongue the palate the throat and all uh, the uh, vocal cords etc the this is called the motor part of speech so the motor part of speech if if that goes we call it dysarthria okay dysarthria um again i i i i warned you that there will be a lot of terms in this so dysarthria uh can happen in a cerebellar disorder because again it's basically motor movements and the timing of the movement is out hence the speech will be very slow and slurred okay when you hear it you will know what we are talking about okay uh cerebellar nystagmus nystagmus i've i've, I've already done in detail just copy and paste that nystagmus information that we had of the eye movements here under cerebellum as well in cerebellum since it also is a big balance and coordination organ uh, there is nystagmus when it goes in dysfunction hypotonia uh, again i take you back to the descending tracts uh, ganong slide of the big circuit in which we uh, severed uh, severed the uh, input from the cerebellum and there was all sorts of issue with the tone and the contractions of the muscle so in cerebellar lesion you also have uh, hypotonia so following this we've done the theory following this i'll be showing you parts small parts of clips uh, i'll label them so that you know what's going on the first clip uh, is a gentleman uh, who will have a, a left arm lesion uh, uh, left uh, left side lesion of uh, initiated by a problem in the cerebellum his right arm is fine but as soon as he is asked to uh, put his finger to his nose from this from his left index finger then you will see pass pointing okay i won't be able to uh, put my comments while that video is playing so i'm just telling you before uh, the second video you'll see is a uh, gait a uh, person will be asked to walk and this chap has a cerebellar lesion and his his uh, his uh, if you pay close attention to the walk uh, his walk is very tentative he's uh, really looking where he's walking he's not comfortable uh, it's uh, it's uh, you can see a degree of uh, discoordination in his in his uh, in his gait um, and he has to be uh, uh, told when to turn and all that and look for when he turns it's not one swift turn he has to make a lot of steps to turn so when you turn and i turn we just turn we just turn the body but when patients with cerebellar disease or or parkinsons uh, they turn they need to do a bit of a circle to turn it's not simple for them it's difficult life is difficult uh, uh dysarthria i don't have a video of so you need to look it up cerebellar nystagmus all the nystagmus videos can be can be watched with this particular point um and uh, what else yes this maneuver this this requires a lot of coordination okay a lot of and if you especially do it quickly this will require a lot of coordination okay now there's a, there's a, the third video uh, will be of of this it it's difficult to uh, uh, decipher what she is doing because she her hands are too close to the camera but you know i've already sensitized you that she has a problem with the cerebellum and the hand does go all over the place in the middle uh, somewhere uh, you'll be able to pick it up okay so over to the videos